Welcome to another Instagram Live how-to with Ziad. Today, we're going to be talking about how to spend less. And this is spending less on a day-to-day -day basis. So a while ago, we went and we talked about how to be a savvy saver. And that episode was more about putting your money away at the beginning of the month and making your saving automatic, especially if you're a natural spender. Um, but today we're just going to be talking over very casual topics, how you can spend less day to day. So these, oh, let's add Ziad in here. These are all going to be things that either I do or that Ziad does or that we've heard of other people doing. Some um, techniques may work for you, some may not. Hey, Ziad. <laughs> hey, Mia. How's it going? It's going good. Oh, I could barely hear you. I should have put my volume up before getting on here. Um, <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> was awesome to have you back here on another episode of How To, episode nine. Yeah. Um, before we get started, just everything that we'll be talking about is just general advice, general conversation, really. And um, none of it should be taken as personal advice. If you have any questions about your current financial situation, please contact your financial advisor. And also yeah. we might bring up some brand names. And if we do that, we are not affiliated with these brands. It just is part of our conversation. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, with this conversation, we are definitely going to be bringing up some uh, companies, some different services that you can use to help save on money. Um, these are just kind of from personal experience and from our research, what we've seen works. And so, um, no affiliation, just kind of things that we like as well. Absolutely. So Zia, start us out with something that you do to spend less on a daily basis or however often. Yeah. So uh, one of the biggest things I try to do to help save money just on the day to day is just to cook at home a bit more. Um, you know, eating out is always nice. It's convenient, but you tend to spend anywhere from three to five times the amount that you would if you cooked at home instead. And so um, just staying inside and, and, and making those meals in your own kitchen uh, is a great way to, to save on save on those kind of expenses. And on top of that, one of the easiest ways that you can be efficient with your cooking is to be meal prepping. Um, and meal prepping is basically just cooking, you know, for the entire week in one day, you, you cook in bulk, and um, that allows you to save on time, save on costs, and a really great way to make sure that you're set up for the week. Uh, and um, and yeah, uh, I have a friend who's really good at meal prepping. I mean, every single Sunday he goes to the grocery store, makes everything for the week. I, yeah. I can't even fathom how you cook that much. I'm not that great at cooking. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe you're, you're definitely better than me. But also on the topic of just grocery shopping, I think it's very important to be a conscious shopper. Um, mm -hmm. You can definitely buy store brand and this isn't only for groceries. This would be, you know, for medicine, for example, getting it from CVS and mm -hmm. doing the CVS brand is typically a lot cheaper than the brand names. Yeah, when they yeah. really do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. You know, you think about, um, you know, like CVS medicine, right, is the same thing as say your commercial brand, but and does the same exact thing, but costs so much cheaper. And so taking advantage of that it goes a long way. Yeah. Definitely. And then one thing that I've started doing is there's this company Imperfect Foods that will mm -hmm. send local produce. It's all either misshaped vegetables, um, local grown overstock. So these yeah. are really foods that the grocery stores would just have to throw away. Mm -hmm. And they're sold at a discount then. And because they come in all these funky shapes and sizes and but it's been really helpful. It's, I mean, it does half of my grocery shopping for me and gets delivered straight to my door. That's, that's amazing. Definitely something I need to check out myself. Um, yeah. On the topic of that, though, in terms of buying things, uh, you know, or, or companies overproducing or having too much supply, you know, being conscious of off seasons for shopping is a great thing to keep in mind. You know, you think about a lot of times uh, goods are being produced for a specific season. You want to wait until that's that, um, blows over goes or, or passes through and then afterwards you can take advantage of these discounted prices on increased supply so you think about months like january is a great month for suits and work attire um, february after valentine's day there's a lot of extra jewelry that's being sold at discounted prices may is great for thrifting most people go spring cleaning or do their spring cleaning and have a lot of extra stuff they want to just throw away and you can go thrifting take advantage of these discounted prices uh, have you seen that with any other kind of months at, at all um 
definitely beginning of summer is great to get mm. workout clothes. Usually the athletic brands and other brands are transitioning to shorts, athletic shorts, um, all the summer wear swimsuits. So that is the time to buy all of your leggings, um, buy all your athletic wear. End yeah. of August is usually the best time to buy swimsuits. They're all on sale. The summer mm -hmm. season is kind of over. Everybody who was going to buy new swimsuits has bought new swimsuits. It starts turning into fall. Best yeah. time to buy swimsuits. Um, October, back to school shopping is mm -hmm. they usually overstock for this. And I'm not sure why, but I've read that it's a great time to buy jeans, that they typically overstock on jeans. Okay. Um, I'm sure school supplies as well. Yeah. It's a great time to go shopping. Um, <laughs> and just whenever there's a change of season is usually the best time to go shopping. If it, there's a staple item that you know that you'll be using for the following year, like a typical black coat or work shirt, you know, they, yeah. they don't go out of style and you can get them on discount. Yeah, most definitely. And I know we talked about thrifting a little bit. I, I know that you thrift a bit more than I do. Do you want to talk a little bit on how that's uh, that's beneficial for your savings or spending less? Oh, I mean, it's definitely beneficial. And I, a lot of it is environmental as well. You know, so many yeah. clothes actually get thrown away. And actually, I'll ask you this. How many articles of clothing or items that you wear do you think that the typical U.S. Um, person buys a year. Hmm. I, th I think That's I have this it. right. I, there was once a <laughs> seminar I watched on it, and I don't yeah. think the numbers changed, but from the last I remember, take I'm, I'm going to guess articles of clothing in a year. I'm going to guess like around like 60, you think? Wow, you are a lot better than the average person guessing. It's 68. Okay, there we go. Yes. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's, that's an insane amount of yeah. clothes. Um, I mean, and this isn't just shirts and pants. You know, this is scarves. This is hats. So yeah. all items. That's an insane amount for everybody to be buying and then giving away. And thrift yeah. stores are often overwhelmed and have to throw clothes away. Yeah, definitely. So thrifting is a great a great way to save money and a great way to also reduce waste. Yeah, definitely. I need to I need to find my local thrift store and get there and get some clothes from there instead. Um, okay. One of the things that one of the things that I've done uh, in terms of taking advantage or being a conscious shopper is just been taking advantage of seasonal sales. Um, you know, there's a lot of good dates that you just want to keep in your calendar. Uh, most stores are going to be having sales on. You think about uh, New Year's, President's Day, Memorial Day. Easter, Labor Day, July 4th, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, all those kind of dates, right? You know, those are great dates to keep in mind because most stores are almost always going to have those sales. And that's when you can really take advantage of lower prices for the same exact goods that they're, that they're selling during the rest of the year. Right. Yeah. Another, another just random thing that I do to save, I'm a huge coffee drinker. I mm -hmm. love coffee and I especially love Pete's coffee. Mm -hmm. So I know that I shouldn't be buying coffee every single day. I have the same coffee at home. I buy Pete's coffee usually and make it at home. I, yeah. You know, we have coffee in the office when we're coming into the office. So I'm also not the most motivated person when it comes to working out. And I made it a thing that I wasn't allowed to get coffee before work at Pete's unless I worked out, went to a Pilates class, yeah. did something. Yeah, which and that definitely took down the number of times I was able to go to Beats. <laughs> but also, so it helped me save. And it also was a way to incentivize me to live a healthier lifestyle, I guess, you know, be better at working out. Yeah, definitely. I think having like that goals oriented approach is such a great way to make sure that your uh, money is being spent where you want it to be spent. And also that you're uh, keeping track or making sure that you are saving as much as you can, um, you know, that's great that, you know, you're able to promote your a better lifestyle while still also cutting down on costs, which is awesome. Uh, on the topic of drinks, uh, one of the biggest hits to anyone's wallet, I feel like, is 
uh, especially the younger professionals, is, you know, socializing and going out with friends and family. Um, you know, when you go to a restaurant or a bar, you know, those drinks are sell it at a, a significantly higher price, right? Especially in Los Angeles. The drinks here are yeah. unbelievable. $17 expensive. for some water. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and so one of the best things that you can do is, you know, if you're going to be going out with friends or so or just going to socialize, um, meet up beforehand and have a few drinks at home. You know, uh, you know, you think about uh, a bottle of wine at Trader Joe's is going to be much cheaper than a glass of wine at a restaurant. They have actual two buck check. But it's, it, it's not cheap yeah. and it doesn't taste bad. They have ones that actually cost $2. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. And so finding those ways to, um, to enjoy, you know, being with friends, being around people, socializing at home while still, uh, you, you know, while still cutting down on those costs is, is an amazing way to, to reduce any expenses. Um, you know, right now in a pandemic, I think one of the greatest things that you can do is, you know, have a Zoom happy hour with some friends, you know, and you're still able to, um, be in touch with the people that you haven't seen in a while uh, while not spending too much. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I would do when going out is sometimes I would pull out cash. So I had a limit of how much I would be spending. Yeah. Yeah. Because these LA places get expensive. So you limit yourself with the cash amount that you have and you can't spend over that amount. I've had friends who even will leave their credit card, leave their debit card at home yeah. and bring cash and only be able to spend that amount. Yeah, and I think that's amazing. And that can be applied to everything else in life, too. It doesn't have to be just going out for drinks or anything. You know, it could be uh, going to your favorite restaurant. You know, you can only use the cash in your wallet on that for the month, anything like that. I think it's great to limit your expenses. Um, for me, just switching, switching subjects here, uh, I am a big reader. Well, that's one of my biggest habits is, is reading. And uh, when it comes to buying books, that can actually get pretty expensive as well, especially if you're buying hard covers. They cost anywhere from 20 to $40. Uh, if you buy a paperback, you're going to bring down that cost at least you know, 5 to $10. And the biggest thing is switching to online. Uh, buying online books is a great way to continue to, 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 continue to expand your knowledge while, while um, making sure you're not spending too much. Uh, and so that's something that I've been doing is switching to online a bit more. Um, or if I want to just buy the physical book, just buy the paperback instead. Have you tried listening to the audiobooks at all yet? I've I've tried it a bit. I haven't uh, switched to it too much yet. I, I mean, I am a big podcast listener, so I figure it wouldn't be too much of a switch. But I do definitely need to check it out a bit more. I think that Audible is seven ninety five a month for. I, I think it's if you're a Prime member, that's the price. Gotcha. But it's pretty great. I mean, you. It doesn't replace reading because I would yeah. say that I definitely still like to read and I like to read physical books, but then yeah. just to, I mean, for books that I don't feel the need to read, I want to listen to more passively. I have them on Audible. So you get a book a month and also they have featured books that usually have to do with, I'd say current, current news and yeah. what's going on in the world. So yeah. it kind of exposes me to books that I wouldn't typically pick out for myself, which has been yeah. a really awesome feature. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I'm going to have to check it out myself. And for any, any of you guys viewing, you know, I, I would say like, why not give it a try? All right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is really a savings habit that I have. It, it does work into it though. Mm hmm. I love my library card. Yes, libraries too. <laughs> yeah. I can rent audiobooks and for Kindle for free. That's awesome. Um, I miss the library. I haven't been to a library in so long. I know. I know. Hopefully they open up soon. Well, this isn't okay, so this isn't really a savings day to day activity that I do mm -hmm. but usually on the first Monday of the month is when I do this for my debit card or whenever I'm paying my credit card I like to look at my full statement and I tend to highlight the different categories that I spend in I also like to look at the dates and see what my patterns are see if I have been spending more on a certain day that I had big splurges or if I am just spending a little bit every day because that can yeah. add up too. Yeah. And then I get a feel for my budget. I'm constantly readjusting my budget. I think it's fine to have a target goal. And then you do have to make adjustments sometimes for yourself and see where your priorities are and 
where you should be spending your money. But visually seeing everything that you're spending money on sometimes makes you a lot more conscious of when you're spending money. Do I really need this? Yeah. Because you see all of a sudden all of these charges add up. Yeah, most definitely. And, and, you know, it's not necessarily a, a savings habit, right? But savings only half the battle monitoring your expenses and your spending is the other half. And so um, I think it's a great thing to do. And on, on top of that, what I recommend to a lot of people and especially of our clients to do is when they think about spending and budgeting is take some time to sit down and really list the five to 10 most important things in, in their life, you know, and that's, um, that could be anything from staying, you know, being close to family or being next to the beach or playing sports or, uh, you know, cooking, any, any, anything along the lines of that. What's important to you? List those five to 10 things, I would say 10 maximum, and focus on those. You know, you want to make sure that when you're spending money, you're spending money on the things that you want to spend on and the things that you actually care about. So when you list those things, and put, it gives you some perspective and you can eliminate all the noise. And so you couple that with checking your expenses, you can make sure that you're adjusting your budget to make sure that's fitting your lifestyle or your, the lifestyle that you actually want. Absolutely. Super mm -hmm. important too. Yeah. I also like that a lot of the topics that we're talking about to save money have to do with doing good for the environment as well. A lot of yeah. them are about reducing waste. So mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of ways that you can save money, you know, using mm -hmm. reusable water bottles, um, using towels instead of paper towels all the time, trying to think yeah. of some more reusable things. Um, makeup wipes, <laughs> makeup wipes and the little makeup pads. So girls, yeah. if you use this to take off your makeup, they have reusable ones that you can buy at CVS or Rite Aid or on Amazon, and then you can just wash those. Yeah, and one of the, yeah, it's one just, it's just little small things that then you don't have to spend money on repeatedly. You don't have to repeatedly buy water bottles. You don't have to repeatedly buy paper towels as often. Yeah, one of the things that I've been doing more recently with reusable uh, reusable goods is actually using reusable straws. Um, and I just kind of bring them around with me, right? And I think it's. A, a little bit one. newer. Yeah. Save the turtles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they're so much better than the plastic straws that end up melting in your mouth anyways. Yeah, those paper straws are tough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did I say plastic? I think I'm, you did. <laughs> I meant paper. I meant the paper ones that will melt in your mouth. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> but also, you know, turning off your lights during the day, just when you're not home, there's no reason for your light to be on. Just turn it off. You can also, you know, bike and walk we live in such a beautiful area here in LA and Santa Monica mm -hmm. um, there's so many great places to bike and walk to mm -hmm. carpooling yeah carpooling is great you know if you have to drive somewhere just try and try and drive together um, it saves uh, it makes it easier on parking it saves on gas you know uh, it's great I mean obviously during this pandemic it's a little tough to carpool with people but when you can or when you know when it feels safe to do so then definitely do it and once things open up you know continue to do so it's a great way to save on money and save the environment absolutely you're breaking yeah. up a little bit on my end but i hope i oh. don't lose you Hopefully um, not. no you're good now you're good now <laughs> right um, also just signing up for memberships for the stores that you typically shop at so i know i have this for ralph's for bonds um for rite aid for walgreens and clothing stores as well. Yeah. A lot yeah. of them offer savings. If you haven't experienced Kohl's cash yet, they will oh, get you on saver. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a great way to save money and you get so many deals. I mean, you always see the tags on, you know, if you're shopping at Ralph's or shopping at Vons on all the savings that you get. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and when you are shopping at those places, you know, if you are making a, a big purchase, one of the things I would recommend is checking online before you actually make that purchase. You know, I, this actually happened to me last Tuesday. Uh, I recently moved to a new apartment last week and, um, right. And I have a TV in my apartment that doesn't have anywhere to sit right now. And so my roommate and I were thinking of getting a TV mount. We went to Costco to go shopping in general, saw a TV mount there for $120. And, uh, before making that purchase right there and then and there, we checked online and we found a very, very similar TV mount 
that was ran us only 30 35 dollars instead and so that happens all the time use the internet as your friend you know most of the time if you see something you can look online and find the same if not a very similar product at a much lower price Yes, I made this mistake the other day, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I got a toaster for way more than I should have paid for it, but it's a little too late. I like the toaster. It's, it's <laughs> fine. But it's really easy to check online. You know, you have it on your phone. You can you can check on your phone while you're in the store even. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then beyond that, you know, couponing might seem a little outdated, but it's still a great way to make sure that you're saving money and just taking advantage of any discount that you can. If you're shopping online, there's there's extensions that you can have on your website that, that look for those coupons for you already. One of the ones that I really like to use is Honey that I have on my monitor every time. And you know, if I'm shopping, it'll let me know, you know, hey, there's you can use this coupon to buy at a discount. And that's amazing. Honey is amazing. Um, my favorite my favorite feature on Honey is it will actually show you how much this was item that you're looking at, for example, online. Yeah. The selling for five months ago, what was the high, what was the low of what this item has sold for? Yeah. That's just, that's just interesting to me to look at I, and to make sure that I'm buying it at a good price. Yeah, definitely. It helps you check, you know, maybe it's really in line with that, uh, the off season purchases that we were talking about earlier, right? Um, definitely. I think that's awesome. Yeah. My uh, roommates made fun of me the other day because this is going back to buying in bulk. I bought 20 toothbrushes the other day, but they were also at the <laughs> low point. Honey told me they were at their low point. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, and I go through toothbrushes faster than anybody I know. So it was exactly. a great purchase. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're saving money. And that's the most important thing. And that's why we're having this IG Live episode in the first place. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, even though this is a little different than what we usually do. This definitely, is fun. Definitely. Yeah. Um, definitely sharing subscriptions on Netflix, Hulu, um, you know, Apple Music or Spotify. They usually have family and single plans that you can pay for. The family ones are a lot cheaper. I think Spotify is $10 for a single user versus 15 for a family, which includes five. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, get on the subscription plans with your roommates, with your friends, with your family. It doesn't have to be your family is what I'm saying. You know, you could do it with your roommates um, and your friends and save a yeah. lot of money. Yeah, exactly. I mean, why not? Why not take advantage of that? Uh, yeah. Anything, anything else, any other savings tips that you keep in mind in terms of the day to day or the month to month? Day to day, month to month. Um, check who's responsible for paying for utilities. Mm -hmm. um, try and get your landlord to pay as much as possible so you can avoid added costs, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, definitely. Day to day, just avoiding when your salary increases, you know, you get a new job, avoid lifestyle creeps so try and keep your lifestyle the same as before yeah a modest lifestyle so that you are you are spending the same amount that you used to be spending but now you're having more left over and then you're able to save more and then you'll be able to reach your longer term goals and save up for larger purchases down the line yeah exactly i mean i think people are really inclined to really to very elevate their lifestyle a lot when they get that pay bump or that pay increase but making sure that you know of course it's great to do so but making sure you're doing it in a responsible manner and and not letting your expenses take over you know and and, and so that you can continue to save more and more and put yourself in a better position moving forward um one of the things that i like to encourage any anyone who's just beginning to save or is having trouble getting in the habit of saving is just starting small uh you know you start small, you say you set a goal for yourself where um, where you save, say, ten dollars a week. Right. And you're saving ten dollars a week, ten dollars a week. And every few weeks you bring you just increase that. So once so it's ten dollars a week, then you bring it up to fifteen dollars a week after a few weeks, then 20, then 30, then 50. All of a sudden you're saving a few hundred dollars a month all because you started small and just kept bringing it up, bringing it up. Really, that's just about building the habit, getting the ball rolling. So that way, with that, once that habit is built, you can get much more serious about saving. Um, and then another thing that I like to encourage anyone to do is when you are making a big purchase or you're purchasing anything that's non-essential, um, wait 24 hours before making that purchase. Uh, you know, you think about, oh, like I really want this big TV, right? 
Um, do you really need that TV? Is it an essential item? No, take 24 hours, make sure that you're, um, make sure that you're not letting your emotions take over and that you're making a responsible purchase there. I think that helps a lot in terms of overspending or buying a lot of things that you're actually not going to use a lot. Um, yeah, my, the whole last thing, like, cart, my whole Amazon cart, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my whole Amazon exactly. cart, my whole Amazon wish list. That's all yeah. stuff I come back to 24 hours later because you exactly. can add stuff there all day. The amount of things that you can find, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's easy it's easy to let you know to 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 get caught up and get um, you know feel like you have to buy it or you really need it when you when you take that time and you take that step back, you realize you know you might not need that exact thing. You can find something for cheaper or similar that can serve the same purpose. Uh, and then the last thing for me here that I like to do is when I do splurge on a big purchase, um, I'll take the same amount that I spent on to indulge with my, for myself. And I'll put the same dollar amount towards my savings. And so that way, um, you are enjoying yourself in the short term, but you're not sacrificing any long term savings for it, you're still able to plan for both. And that's just an easy way to one, make sure you're not spending as much. And two, uh, make sure that you are if you are spending, you're going to be saving as well. Right. One more thing that this isn't something that I do, but I have seen this a lot on actually, I've seen it on TikTok. I was told this morning, it's not just a TikTok trend. Um, mm -hmm is right some people have been writing one through 100 on envelopes so you have 100 envelopes and you're writing one through 100 okay um, and then you pick two envelopes a week from a box and put that amount of cash into the envelopes so by the end if you sum up one through 100 that's five thousand fifty dollars yeah um so I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. You do have to have all the cash on hand. and uh, But it's really whatever works for you with putting it away. And maybe that's the like out of sight. And, the uh, you know, it's more of a random expense because it's not the same amount every week. Yeah, that could work exactly. for you. Exactly. And, you know, gamifying it, you know, I think makes it a lot easier for you to say making it more of a fun thing to do rather than oh, I have to save money, making it feel, you know, rather than it feeling like a chore. So I love that. Definitely. And then yeah. also, this is something that sometimes I do do, which is calculate the cost of purchases in terms of hours worked. So yeah, let's say someone was making $20 an hour, and now they're looking at buying this $40 shirt. Is it worth the two hours that you spent at work? And putting that really puts it into perspective and makes you think about whether you really need this item or not, or whether it's really worth it. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's amazing to shift that perspective because it's easy to forget how hard you work to earn those dollars. And so just to spend it on whatever, you know, is something you want to avoid. And so that allows you to do so. Definitely. You could also do it as cost per use is sometimes how I like to do it is I think yeah. about, do I need this? This shirt's really cute. What's three things that I can wear with it? Where would I wear it to? How yeah. often am I going to wear it? And see yeah. if I'll really get my money's worth. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, those are all the savings things that I really do on a day-to-day -day basis. We'd love to hear any, any other tips, tricks that you use. You being the yep. audience, not you, Zia. <laughs> I've heard your things. <laughs> I don't need to yeah, hear from most, you more. Um, most definitely. No, I'm kidding. But definitely, we'll be back next time to do another how-to. Yeah, uh, back next Thursday, early afternoon. Um, if you do have uh, any tips that you'd like to share with us, if you do have any questions financially at all, um, do reach out to us. You know, we're here to help. Even even if you're just getting started on saving or looking to find any budgeting tips or just looking for general financial questions, you know, we're here to be in be assistance. You can reach out to me at Zita Jazi on Instagram, find me on LinkedIn or uh, through my email, ziad at gerberkawasaki.com. Yes. And thank you, Ziad, for being here. And thank you to our audience for checking out what we have to say about how to spend less and be less stressed. <laughs> Yeah. Um, that was a bad joke we will be here but yeah we'll see you next week <laughs> thanks for joining us thank you mia have a good one no problem thank you everyone All right.